What's up everybody? I'm Austin with Colorado Custom Game Calls. This is my goose trailer. Goose season's right around the corner. It's already started up north. So I'm going to give you a tour of this bad boy and stay tuned and I'll show you how this is set up. Okay, so this is my goose trailer. It's a 2008 gator tail made out of Florida. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. I got a screaming deal on it. It used to be an old car haul trailer or cargo trailer. Um, the biggest thing is that the length is 26 feet. I've got a lot, a lot of space in this bad boy. I think I got it set up pro pretty well, and uh, I'm gonna show you that. So first we're gonna start on the outside of the trailer. Lighting, lighting is probably one of the most important things because you gotta be able to see what you're doing, set up decoys, set up A-frames, blinds, whatever you're doing. What I've got on top of the door here is a 24 inch curved light bar paired with two four inch pucks, basically 45 degreed off of that curved light bar. Then down here, down a little farther from the trailer, I got two 24 inch straight light bars. And then the really cool feature on this trailer that I just added this year is right up front here, I've got this remote control for this movable spotlight. This thing is really slick because I can uh, move that to pretty much wherever I want. I mean, obviously, right behind the trailer is not going to work. It's just going to shoot over the trailer. But if I've got people setting up blinds or something on the other side or cutting brush while other guys are setting up blinds, that is a really handy feature, and I'm really excited to try that out this year. To give you a little bit more of an understanding on this light, it's movable, and it's all done by remote. It's also, I can remove that light and move it if I want to. There it is on, there it is off, and I can move it in whatever direction I want, which is really handy. Now on the back of the rig, I've got this big ramp door, which is really nice to get people in and out, especially with equipment and stuff like A-frames, bags of decoys, whatever the case is. But again, the lighting. Up here, I got a 52 inch curved light bar at the very top of the trailer, along with two four inch pucks, again, on the corner of the trailer, just to give more light out. And then on the back side of the trailer, the driver's side of the truck, or what I call the blind side, which is the side that I usually set blinds up on, I've got two more 24 inch straight light bars, which really brightens this up for the guys that are setting up A-frames, along with that spotlight that I showed you earlier, that thing's gonna be slick. So before we come into the trailer here, I just wanted to show what uh, my command center looks like. Um, I got a switch here to kick on the panel which this is just a rocker switch panel. It shows my voltage, and this runs all of my lights, interior and exterior, um, which is really handy. So if I don't need, say, the back side of the trailer, the blind side, I can leave that off or something. Down here, uh, I've got the remote control for the spotlight that I showed you up front. Uh, this is just a little cargo net that came in really handy. Um, this is just a cabinet, a wooden cabinet that I picked up on Facebook Marketplace for next to nothing. It actually has the battery in there that's displaying the voltage right there. This is really handy because it can hold storage. Uh, I got, um, I can hold batteries, extra stuff, whatever the case is. It's a cabinet with a battery and then it's got extra storage in it as well. So another exterior feature that I did on this trailer was a recessed 110 plug. This is just a simple plug-in to plug into an extension cord from a house or a shop or something. Say I need to charge the battery for the trailer in that command center, or if I need to run something off a of 110, say a charger for the hedge trimmer or flapper decoy batteries or anything that runs off a of 110, I have the ability to lock my trailer and still utilize 110. I don't have to leave this propped open, this door propped open and run a cord through it. It was a simple, I think it was a 178 inch hole that I drilled through and then and there's a pigtail right above the command center. So now we're in the trailer looking back at the command center one more time. I just wanted to show you that pigtail from that 110 recess plug that I wanted to show you. If I want to power that battery that's inside this box, I can do that. Like I said, if I want to charge hedge trimmers, uh, batteries or anything like that, that's the nice thing about having that pigtail out. Here I just have a hook for my lanyard because I do leave my keys for my trailer, not only for the padlocks for the trailer, but for the tongue lock as well. That is on my lanyard, so I don't want to lose them, so I leave those right here. 
while I'm setting up decoys or something like that. So now we're starting to get into the meat and potatoes of the trailer a little bit. Um, what you can see right up front here is I got three sets of propane uh, burners, uh, tanks, heater tanks. Um, they're just in milk crates or something like that just to make sure that they're not rolling around in here. I have the spare tire for the trailer. I got my waders. Uh, I just leave them in here for storage purposes. I don't typically use them for goose season, but more for duck season. But I like to keep my stuff, try to keep it all together. And then here I got all my full bodies. I got roughly about seven dozen full bodies in here. But I made this little uh, wall here. And these studs are removable. They're two by four inch studs. And they remove. They're just a simple deck uh, hanger there. Super easy to put up. Um, very effective. Over here, this is something that I really like. Um, it's a set of lockers. They're not the greatest shape. They're not the most prettiest thing in the world. I got a set of four here, but I got this on Facebook Marketplace for less than 60 bucks, if I remember right. The nice thing with these is the A, the storage. Like I got my coat in there, knives. I got cleaning supplies on birds. I got an extra thing of shells just in case. Um, beanies, headbands extra headlamps. I've got a game hanger just in case we need it or something like that. If I travel with people, they can put their stuff in here. They can also padlock their equipment if they want. That's a really nice feature that I really like that I added to this trailer. So opposite of the lockers on the other side of the trailer, I have a bench. Now this little bench came out of my current camper that I own. My wife likes to redo campers. Um, she didn't like the dinette in it. So instead of throwing it out or throwing it away, I decided to utilize it in here. So it's a bench to be able to put on boots uh, if you need to take a break or whatever. But the nice thing too is I still get the storage out of it. So I can lift up that piece of plywood and I've got bench storage available. Say you got kids and they need to take a break, take a nap, something like that. They can lay on that bench, hang out, put their boots on and relax a little bit. So opposite side of the bench is now my shelf system that I made. When I bought this trailer uh, last year, it was right at the beginning of season, like literally the week before. So I had to scramble and put something in to put all this stuff on. Uh, the shelf system was really easy. It was made out of two by fours and plywood. Um, currently, it's holding about 30 dozen or so um, silhouette decoys. I've got some shelves down here in this blue bag. I got extra storage for flyer socks in that storage tub. Up here in this green bag, I got my snow socks. All of my snow socks are up here. That's about 10 dozen roughly. And then up here, I've got chairs for pits, blinds, whatever the case is. I got a lean back blind right here, like one of those lean back chairs with like the blanket. I also have an extra stool. I got a couple buckets. And then I also have probably the most important thing for brushing a blind is a hedge trimmer. This thing is only from Harbor Freight. It's nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. I carry a couple extra batteries just in case and make sure they're charged the night before. But this thing is a lifesaver when it comes to cutting brush. So exactly across on the opposite side of the shelf system that I've got is I got two layout blinds right here just strapped to the wall. That's kind of handy. I just got some eye hooks and I put them into the wall. I got one ratchet strap holding both of them up together. It's kind of nice because I can suck them into the wall and keep this lane way open for people to come through or for, you know, moving equipment or whatever the case. I also have two rolled up A-frames. They're partially brushed in, almost three quarters of the way brushed in. But these are nice because I can do the exact same thing with the layouts. I can roll these up ratchet strap them to the wall they're not on the floor they're not in the way they're not in the little laneway here and the poles are in a green bag right in front of them on the back end of the of the trailer so if guys are setting up a-frames they can quickly come into the trailer with the ramp grab these a-frames go get them set up so on the opposite side of the blinds i have the shelving system again i'm kind of on the back end of it almost out of the trailer um I've got some off-brand silhouettes in here along with some Canada socks. And then this is really neat that I really like. It's just a simple hanging system for shovels, a broom, a rake to gather up brush. And then what I really like is the magnet to pick up shells when you're done for the day. The other thing too, I don't know about you, but definitely for me, is flags. 
I am the guy nine times out of 10, if somebody tells me to grab the goose flag, I'm going to forget it. So what I did is I hung them right here on the end of the wall, right here, I got three of them, and they're on the ass end of the trailer. So that way I do not forget to grab them, and they're just simply pushed right there with um, a shovel holder. Up here, I just have a little rail system. Um, it came with the trailer when I bought it. I just kept it here in case I wanted to, you know, have extra brush hanging. I can strap it up to here as long as it's tall enough. Or if I have other equipment or something like that, I can strap it right here and it's right, it's movable. That's the nice thing about it. The last thing on the end of the trailer is this shelf system right here. It just holds our hammers uh, in case we're in Colorado so we get frozen ground pretty early in the season. Uh, that's for silhouettes, socks, anything that we got at stakes for A-frames, anything that we got to pound in the ground. I got a whole bunch of hammers and uh, they live in that little shelf and they're not bouncing around everywhere. So pretty much the only thing left is the end of the trailer here. This is the ramp door that I was talking about earlier. Um, what I did do is I added grip tape about every foot away just to be able to give you a little bit more grip uh, going up that trailer because sometimes when it's wet it can get pretty slick and guys can fall sometimes So at least you got some grip tape there to help you step up into the trailer if you need it um, This is my goose setup guys. It's it works perfect for me It might not work perfect for everybody else But hopefully this gives you some ideas or some motivation for your goose trailer build um, I really like the way I have this set up because it's clean I can walk in and out, I can get multiple people through here, and it's very effective. And I think we're gonna do some really good things with this trailer. So that's pretty much it, guys. The next video that I'm gonna do is on the duck boat that I've got. Um, but I appreciate you guys checking this out, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.